Hi there, Robin here from Expert On. Today we're going to do some uh, questions and answers and comments uh, from our channel. Uh, and we're going to start right off. We've got uh, going to Paul David now. Uh, he makes reference about uh, having not enough effects or the poor uh, settings on uh, the Pro FX 8V2 from Mackie. Now, that's a good point. We should bring over a mixer and take a look see at that. And voila, the mixer has appeared. Now, uh, what he's really going on, uh, and, and it's a good point, so don't take it the wrong way here, Paul. Uh, yes, uh, you only have 16 and not a whole bunch of ton of options on it, but uh, the idea is to make it convenient and to give you something there for you. But you want better, absolutely. Now, you can either get a better mixer, you can get more options, but you can also buy a separate effects processor uh, that'll plug in right through the insert. This is how, if you wanted to have two or three different kinds, uh, you would plug them in the insert and it basically loops through the effects. And this way you can bring it in. Uh, they do this for convenience and to give somebody a more, uh, a full package in a mixing board. So, I mean, there is conveniences to having it there, but like anything, people outgrow something. Uh, they want more. And for sure, you can either do that right off the hop and buy yourself something bigger, or you can just plug in and customize it the way you want. So there we go on that one. All right, so we got a question from, uh, I think it's, and I mispronounced it, my apologies, Sylvain, and uh, it has to do with the Alto Troopers and the output on the back of the speaker. Now, I'm a little confused on the why, but the question is, uh, using the uh, XLR output on the back of the Trooper uh, to connect it to a uh, notebook uh, sound card uh, with the makes claim to a WLRF uh, mini jack 3.5. So I'm, I'm thinking that's probably the headphone jack or the microphone input jack or some combination. You need a special cable to do that. Um, you need to get the cable that allows you to split the um, combo of the microphone and the headphones into two separate lines. Uh, so if you want to do that, that's the first thing you have to get there. Uh, once you get that, then you need to get yourself a proper cable that's going to go from XLR uh, to a split stereo. Now, these cables are very confusing because we look at them, uh, let's say on Amazon, and we see a cable that looks like uh, a stereo headphone jack at one end, but it has a three-pin XLR at the other. Those are usually... Uh, a connection of a uh, balanced XLR to a balanced quarter inch uh, cable, uh, TRS, that sort of thing. So that's actually the wrong cable you want to use. Uh, you need, because the signal is at that point mixed stereo. So the XLR coming out of the speaker was meant to plug into another speaker or into a subwoofer. And it's basically to carry the signal with a third wire for noise canceling. Uh, it's basically an inverted signal from the first one, but that's a whole nother video. But what happens is if you try and take that and bring it in, it really messes things up. Sometimes it doesn't work at all. Sometimes it gives you a buzz. Sometimes the sound sounds completely opposite on the other channel. So uh, normally I, you really need to get some cables that are going to bring you across to that. So uh, is it possible? Yes. Uh, but you do have to make sure to you probably your best bet is to get a cable that's going to go from the XLR to uh, an unbalanced quarter inch and then get an adapter. I mean, it sounds terrible, but it, it's a lot of it's a lot of little wiring pieces that you have to do. Uh, if you have a small mixer, it would be a lot easier, a lot easier getting a, a $50 mixer allow you to take the quarter inch, bring it into the mixer if that's where you want to end up and then go from there to your uh, your notebook. So that would be another way to do it. Uh, though if I had a little mixer, I probably would have used it before the speaker and in which case that would probably be even a better setup there at all. Uh, I hope that helps, but um, yeah, I would try and avoid using the XLR output on the back of the speaker uh, to get into the notebook. I would probably want to have a small mixer to do that. All right, so more of a comment, less than a question. It's uh, from Alicia, and it's on the Blast King. Uh, I guess the person owns one, or they've been out with one, and they've seen it work and out and about, which is always good. So uh, they're basically making a statement, because I try to make reference to it in what Blast King, the particular speaker we had here, which was the 
uh, KXD2 15A, and that was, you know, kind of like where it was comparing against in product line. Uh, and Alicia was making point that it's it felt more like an ELX 115P, so that would be the older generation Electra voice uh, in comparison. So, uh, I mean, make good points. Uh, bang for the buck, it definitely is. If you need a loudspeaker. So not just, you know, I want to dial it back and run it at 30, 40%. If you need a loudspeaker, uh, definitely bang for the buck is sure fire way to go. Uh, if you're down uh, in the Florida area or if you order it from their website. All right. So a comment from Chica. Uh, again, excuse me if I mispronounced your name, but uh, you bought one of these WRX843 uh, uh, Gemini's line array. Uh, there's this is also in a 900 series, and there's even another one at 300 or something like that. Anyways, but they're not getting a lot of volume out of it. They uh, brought it out for their first gig, and they were very sad because uh, it had no volume. So, one, two things. One, it could be defective. Things happen like that. So, you know, if you can exchange it, by all means. But first, have a look in the back seat, and I'm, I'm assuming you probably went through a lot of this, but we'll just go through real quick. Uh, your microphones and line inputs are going to be going in here. You also have an extra set of RCA and Bluetooth options on 3 and 4. Now, the important thing is, to make that decision, am I plugging a microphone in or am I plugging a line in? So, you definitely want to have that button, if it's a microphone, pushed in on top. Uh, then, proportionally adjust. You want to get your levels as high as you can here before you start dialing in your master volume. Now, your master volume is going to drive the subwoofer and the line array on top. Uh, so you basically don't want to have this down at three and then try and figure out where to get volume from Adjust everything so this way you get the most out of the speaker without getting any feedback So that maybe is at 75% on one 80% on the other or 60 and 75 whatever the adjustment is and if you're using any uh, Background tracks you can do that by using the level input here because you would have plugged that in there once you have that as high as you possibly can while still keeping the quality good, then you start turning up the master volume. This is what's gonna decide how loud that speaker's gonna be. Maybe you're just practicing at 30%, but when it comes time to do the gig, you turn it up to 75% or 80%. Uh, as long as it's sounding good, there you go. If you're not getting a lot of volume, you gotta ask yourself, am I playing for 100 people? And if you're playing for 100 people, you might be having an issue carrying across the whole space. Um, if you're only playing for 15 to 35 people, you should be doing pretty good with one of these guys. Uh, if you're getting closer to 50 people and you're just you're playing, so I'm not DJing, you're just playing, right? You're playing an instrument, that sort of thing, singing. You should be able to get yourself up to 50 people plus. Uh, and if you double down on one of these, you should be able to do even better. So I hope that helps. If you have any more questions or comments, leave them down below. If you've done everything I've done here and you just bought it, like I said, there could be something wrong with it. Talk to the dealer that you bought it from. All right, new question from Bullseye Transportation. And we also, by the way, besides doing uh, consumer pro audio, pro audio, that sort of thing, we also do marine audio ATVs, that sort of stuff, for speakers for that too. And uh, the question that he has is in relationship to a uh, ATV speaker, so one of those tube speakers that go around the front of your handlebars. And it's called a PL ATV. 85 BT. Now these are really cool. They're eight inch, two of them, they're Bluetooth, they have a lighter adapter on them, power them up, that sort of thing. His question, can you pair two of these units together? No. Uh, it has Bluetooth 2.1 in it and it doesn't have a pair sync option on the actual uh, unit itself. Uh, if you want to run two of these at the same time, they'd have to be on the same quad and you'd have to do it using uh, the 3.5 option. So you'd have to take whatever you're using as music source, get a Y splitter and plug them both in individually and run them that way. Um, I mean, though it would really be cool if you had two ATVs and they were always within proximity of each other, if you could just pair off the one unit, that would be cool, but that's not the case. So there you go. That one answered. New question from uh, Cheeto asking uh, if I would be doing uh, testing on Mackie's DRM 315 speaker system. Probably down the road. I don't think we're going to see that uh, soon. Uh, we are actually going to start bringing in bigger speakers. Uh, so we're going to see, uh, you know, models up from Electro Voice, models up from the midline from JBL. Uh, and eventually, yes, we'll probably will get uh, the midline from Mackie. But for now, let's say for the next month or so, 
Probably not, because we're going to bring in JBL, then we're going to bring in Electro Voice, and then we're going to make a decision if it's Mackie after that. So uh, that's what's going to be happening over the next few weeks. New question from DJ Techno of the Fox. Now, his question is, um, is he going to get really great bass out of, let's say, the Mackie Thump versus JBL uh, Eon uh, 615 or the Thump, that sort of thing. Uh, in the question, he says, lean towards the Mackie, which isn't a bad choice. Uh, the JBLs are on like stupid sale right now till the end of the year. So you may jump on that. Uh, if you like the Bluetooth on the Mackie, definitely get the Mackie. But the question, in the question itself, there's second, there's punchy bass too. Uh, and there's reference to maybe it's being used uh, at home. Uh, so this that's a completely different question. Uh, so if I'm buying it for Bluetooth, uh, you know, Mackie's got a great Bluetooth system for pairing off music. Uh, if you want to dial in settings and really play around with the speakers and take advantage of a big sale, JBL, right now, the Eons. Have a look down our link for Amazon. Those speakers are just at a great price right now. Uh, but if you are you want big, heavy bass, you may want to go with a uh, smaller speaker, like a 12-inch, and a subwoofer. So if you're playing this in the rec room, uh, in your bedroom, uh, in the living room, anywhere like that, uh, you're probably better off with a small subwoofer or a smaller subwoofer, like a 12-inch if you can find one, uh, and a 12-inch top. Now you're going to get some really punchy bass, and you're going to have tons of volume and that sort of thing. So, I mean, if I got the room size wrong, let me know. Drop me a comment on it, and uh, we'll straighten it up for next time. All right, new question from Mike, and it has to do with the Alltech Expedition 8. And his question is, uh, does it sound better than the JBL 300? Now, personally, I haven't gotten there yet. So we are working on getting some more JBL speakers because the Alltech Lansing has been super popular. So, you know, we're probably going to expand that line of product for us. And one of the items we are going to bring in is the JBLs. Uh, so... And that might actually be the only option because I'm not a big fan of all the other stuff that's out there. But the JBL, I mean, everybody talks so highly about it. So we're definitely going to bring that in. Does it sound better? I think it would be more of a Coke and Pepsi option when it comes to that. Uh, there may be size differences that one person prefers a little bit smaller, you know, a little bit bigger sound. Um, we're going to find out if the bass is better on it. Uh, I mean, it looks cool in videos, that's for sure. So uh, nobody seems to complain too much about it. So, but I, uh, the uh, Alltech Lansing is very exciting because, of course, it's waterproof. It's got, you know, it's got the big bass boost to it. Everybody really likes it. It's got a good flashy show to it. So, uh, and you can pair two off together, which is, these are all important features. So, uh, right now, I can say I haven't had it in the showroom, so I haven't really put it head to head. Um, but we will work on that for you. All right, I got Lamar here who's asking me if we're going to be able to get uh, into some Harbinger speakers and do a review on that. Like, uh, for example, he asked for the V2315. Uh, he's heard the, he's heard good things about them. Uh, and uh, can I do a review on those? Well, uh, they're pretty much, you know, because we're actually a dealer. So um, we can only get our hands on what we can get our hands on sometimes. And we're also in Canada. Uh, this product's not available in Canada. I think it's pretty much exclusive to, or it is actually the house brand of Guitar Center. Um, I could be wrong, but that seems to be the only place I can find it. So, and it happens. I mean, it's like Best Buy has particular brands and models that are only for them. Uh, keeps it off Amazon, that kind of thing. Same thing with pro audio equipment. There are certain things that are made for really big retails. We have a big retailer in Canada. There's a big retailer in the States and they sometimes have their own exclusive products. So I think that's the case here. One day it may happen. They may reach out to us or we may reach out to them and uh, see if we can uh, do some reviews on their products. But for now, uh, you're going to have to go by other people's opinions or drop by the store yourself. Nice part about it is everybody kind of lives within proximity of a guitar center if you're in the States. So you can just head on down and have a look-see. There we go. So that pretty much covers it for today when it comes to the questions. Uh, if you've got questions or comments, leave them in the videos you're watching or leave them on this particular video here. Uh, try and get back to them as often as I can. And uh, again, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.